That's the one we needed. Nice fish. Right, that has to be a fish. There we go. Oh my. You just choked that square bill. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out on the lake where I've done a lot of damage with a square bill. And I just want to show y'all a few tips and tricks on how to fish a square bill, where to fish a square bill, just so you can have an idea on when to use it and when to use it effectively. It's been a confidence bait of mine over the past few years. And uh, I just want to show you what I have learned. So stick around, see if you can learn anything new. I do think that a few of these tips and tricks are unique. So I hope that you enjoy today's video. All right, let's see if we can learn something new about the square bill. Okay, so I keep it very, very simple. These are the two colors that I throw almost exclusively. I throw this natural sexy shad color 95% uh, of the time. If the water clarity is below one foot, I will throw a chartreuse and black square bill. The vast majority of the time though, the bass that I am targeting are uh, targeting shad. So I throw a shad color square bill well over 90% of the time. These are KVD 1.5s, and on the KVD 1.5, I've just upgraded the hooks to Gamagatsu EWG size 4 hooks. So my hookup ratio is significantly higher upgrading the hooks to size 4 Gamagatsu hooks. And I always have a hook sharpener handy. It really helps the hookup ratio. After catching... 10 to 12 bass those hooks start to dull up so a uh, hook sharpener is highly recommended to use a hook sharpener all you do is you take the hook and you run towards the point of the hook you don't want to go up and down and you don't want to go away from the point away from the point builds up metal that's called burrs and then that actually decreases hookup ratios so um, when you're sharpening the hooks run the tip of the hook towards the grain and down that is how you sharpen hooks and that will help increase hookup ratios Okay, so whenever I started throwing a crankbait, I did not have a dedicated crankbait set up. Um, and my hookup ratio really suffered because of it. So now what I throw is a Dobbins Fury Series crankbait rod. It's seven foot. I have a loose speed spool, seven five to one, running 14 pound test. And then I have my sexy shad KVD 1.5 with the Gamagatsu EWG hooks, size 4. So that is my bread and butter square bill crankbait setup. So um, I like to throw around a lot of heavy structure, uh, especially wood. So I need that extra pound test. You can get away with 12 in a lot of the scenarios, but just going up to 14 really makes me feel more comfortable and I pull a lot of uh, big bass out of wood. So uh, just having that uh, little extra wiggle room really helps if there's any nicks in the line. Um, and it just helps with the overall uh, risk of breaking off. So um, that's my setup. Dobbins Fury, seven foot, running on a speed spool, on a loose speed spool, seven five to one gear ratio with 14 pound test and that KVD 1.5 and Sexy Shad with those Gamagatsu hooks. That's what I throw, that's what you'll see me throwing, and that's what I've been catching them on on the past few videos. So let me show you what I'm looking for whenever I'm fishing the wood and how I approach the wood and uh, a few other tips and tricks of fishing other structures with a square bill. Okay, so first we'll talk about rod positioning. Whenever I'm throwing up shallow and I know that there's shallow wood or shallow structure, I'll throw up really close to where I wanna be. And then I'll have my rod tip up and I will pull 
the bait towards me. And whenever I do that, I can feel wood, I know I'm knocking into wood, and I can pull that square bill up and over the wood. Oh, and just like that, that's a good way. So, as you can tell, it works. So, I'm reeling, pulling up. I feel the I feel that square bill coming up and over the wood and then we'll come out and grab it. All right, so a square bill around for a little while. one we needed 18 and a half number three Another nice one. Another quality fish. All right, 17 and a quarter. Another solid fish. Awesome. Quality one right there. Nice fish. I'm probably gonna go 18 and a half, 19. All right, 18 and a half. So, rod tip is high when you know that the structure is shallow and you let that bill really, really dive down to deflect off of that wood. Whenever I see wood, I immediately think square bill. So, reel and pull, reel and pull. Now once I feel like I'm away from the structure, my rod tip will start to drop, and then that bait will start to run three foot or so. So whenever I throw up shallow, that bait is really sticking in somewhere between probably six to 12 inches of water. And then as I drop, so does the depth. And then that'll run about three to five, three foot, four foot maybe. If I throw out and I continue to wind, it's gonna to go to about a depth of four to five foot. Depending on your line diameter, the lighter the line, the deeper the square bill will wanna go. But this square bill, is designed to go up to about five foot if you continue to wind the entire time. What I like to do is if I am fishing in grass, I like to see that the grass is starting to die off around four or five foot. And then I start playing with my rod angles. So I know that if I throw out and I'm reeling at about a 45 degree angle that that uh, lure is gonna run about two to three foot deep. And if I'm not feeling that grass tick, I will continuously drop the rod tip until I feel like I'm hanging out more at three or four feet, possibly even five foot, and I want to feel myself tick the grass. And so let me show you a few examples of me fishing grass flats 
and along grass edges using side scan and 2D sonar. Seeing some sparse grass out here on the graph. Just make a few casts real quick. That's a nice one. Peel and drag, shoo wee. That's definitely a higher quality fish on the square bill. So what I'm doing is, you can see on my side scan right now, right on the outside edge right now, to my right, I can see that I am hugging a wall of grass. And so I'm just throwing directly straight out in front of my kayak. And I'm imagining I am running right alongside of it i'm reeling down quick to get it down to that four or five foot zone and then i'll either sweep my rod or you'll see me lift up this way Stay down, stay down. Oh my. That is a monster, y'all. That is an absolute tank. Come on. Yeah. All right. That is the one we needed. You just choked that square bill. Look at that. Hopefully she goes over 20. Oh yeah. 21 on the nose. Something else that a square bill is really good for is when you see schooling bass. Um, those bass really like to school up uh, during the late summer, early fall, and they start feeding up for the spawn in winter. So I really like to use square bills almost exclusively whenever I see schooling bass. I've just had a lot of success with schooling bass and when bass are targeting shad specifically. So uh, let me show you a clip right now with me targeting schooling bass that are eating shad. See if we can get in there. All right, that has to be a fish. There we go. About a pound and a half, two pounds. See if we can get back out there. Thumped. Just got thumped again. Oh, there it is. They're not small. Nope, that one's not small at all. It's probably about three, four pounder. Golly. It's a beautiful fish. 
and she choked it. Also, whenever you start to read 2D sonar well, you can start to see different arches and where bass are positioning um, underneath you. And so I was in a tournament recently and I continued to see these arches and I figured they were bass. And so what I was doing was I was um, throwing this square bill and I was keeping my rod tip low trying to target those bass that were hanging around about five or six foot. So let me show you this clip and how I was targeting bass that were hanging out deeper on a grass flat and how I was able to see them and target them. You can see marks on the graph. It looks like there's fish hanging out. Yeah, there are fish hanging out right at six foot. That's a better one. Yeah, I thought I saw him at six foot. So just a few things on retrieves real quick. There are just two retrieves that I'm doing if I'm in open water. I will reel down and then I'll pull the square bill up. Reel down and pull the square bill up. That's probably my go-to retrieve. If I'm not running into any structure, whether that be wood or grass. And then the other one that I like to use especially whenever I'm targeting deeper structures like a brush pile or deeper grass that's hanging around four or five foot is I'll reel down and then I'll sweep my rod. Reel down, sweep my rod. And that's only if I'm not running into anything with the square bill. So that changing of cadence really helps um, those bass react to that square bill. Something else that I like to do is I will just pull the crankbait and then let it come back up. And then I will wake the crankbait and then I'll let it come back up. This technique really, really works well for me whenever I know that they're spawning and um, I can just run this right over their head. Sometimes also it'll work whenever they're up shallow in the mornings and they're still feeding on top and you can wake it like that as well. Um, so that's just a different technique that uh, a lot of people don't use. I didn't want to make today's video too long. I just wanted to share a, a few tips and tricks that I have learned over the past few years. So remember, we only need two colors. We need the chartreuse in black and sexy shad. The brand that I like to use is a KVD 1.5 with the Gamagatsu EWG size 4 hooks. And then I like to use it on a Dobbins Fury 7 foot crankbait rod with a loose speed spool 7.5 to 1. That seems to be the perfect gear ratio for me on 14 pound test, if you're, especially if you are fishing around heavy structure. The things that we like to target is wood, grass flats, grass edges, ticking the tops of grass, uh, schooling bass, and even brush piles, if you can get the crankbait deep enough. All right, so I hope that it helped y'all out today. Those are just a few tips and tricks that I have learned over the past few years. Lately, I've been really, really catching them on a square bill. So y'all should get out there and try to throw one yourselves. If you have any other questions, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video today. And if you haven't already, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.